Can I introduce me to your friends? Good thing happens not here. He tanned the hide on my ass for being so rude. Francis Bedlam you know, but then who's not heard of this patron of the fine arts and supporter of entrepreneurs of limited initial means? And the dwarfs Carlo Vares, known also as Cleaver. Carlo's in entertainment, mostly. I'm looking for Horson Jr. Interesting. What do you want with him? Junior's gonna help me find someone. Horson's not helped a soul in all his miserable life. I'll ask him nicely. See, Cleaver? Perhaps if you'd not called Junior an uncle fucker and asked him nicely, he'd have showed up today. Gentlemen, you out of your fucking minds? A chat session? Horse son's out to get us, and he'll succeed eventually. We've got to kill him first. So by all means, you sit here, soak, fart, and watch the bubbles rise, while I send my boys to Horse son's hidey holes. They'll make some noise, flush the bugger out. Welcome back to another Witcher lore video guys. So I got a suggestion from this user the other day, so I thought this was a really really cool idea as this part of the game was always really really interesting for me. It was the first time you went to the massive city and you meet all these characters, so as you can tell from that comment, today's video is going to be on the gangs of Novigrad. So anyway, in today's video I'm going to be discussing the Novigrad gangs, which include the King of Beggars gang, Horse and Juniors gang, Cleaver's gang, and Dijkstra's gang, or as some of you may know this gang, Siggy Reuven's gang. But anyway, I'm going to be discussing the basics of each gang, their notable members, and how these four gangs and their leaders, the Big Four, run the city of Novigrad. So to begin with, I will discuss the King of Beggars gang. So this gang is led by Francis Bedlam, or, as I'm sure most of you know him, the King of Beggars. So you meet him when you first enter Novigrad, he's one of the first people you have to find is you've got to discover what happened to Triss, you've got to try and find out what's happened to Ciri, you know the whole quest there, but he's one of the first people you meet in Novigrad. So I'm sure all of you will probably know him just because of that part of the game. So this gang's headquarters is known as the Putrid Grove, which is where you actually go in The Witcher 3, I just talked about that briefly then. The Putrid Grove is pretty much the place where this gang does all its dealings, it's got a lot of places that you can fence off stolen goods, etc like that, it's just almost like a safe haven for the King of Beggars gang. So this gang's members were mainly prostitutes, smugglers, thieves, and of course, beggars. And this is due to the fact that effectively every member of this gang was poor in some way, and came from areas such as the Bits and the Lacehold district. Because this gang, at least as the King of Beggars says it, is almost like a, a group for the people, it's a way that the people can be part of something and the poorer parts of society can try and succeed in a way. So based on the occupations of each member, we know that this gang's revenue was probably from extortion, thieving and pickpocketing. So even though they're supposed to be, you know, I guess you could say almost like the good gang of Novigrad compared to some of the other gangs that I'll tell you about, they're still a little bit on the bad side because obviously it's a gang and they do illegal things. So next, I'm not entirely sure how to describe this gang's banner or you might even say sigil or emblem, but you can draw your own conclusions just from the image I'm showing on screen. It'd be actually something really interesting for you guys to comment about, tell me what it is, maybe you know something from history, I don't. But all I can say about this emblem is that it is a yellow shape on a green field. So finally, before we move on to the next gang, the notable members include Francis Bedlam, or the King of Beggars, Tim Boy, the Merchant of Putrid Grove, the Porter of Putrid Grove, and Rico Meyersdorf. Now I'm going to move on to Horse and Junior's gang. So this gang was led by Cyprian Wiley, or, as he is more commonly known, Horson Jr. So this gang controlled parts of the Bits district, and you'll know the parts that it controlled because I imagine a lot of you will have played The Witcher 3, but for those of you that haven't, this gang controlled an arena and a casino in that area. We also know that they pretty much extort money out of people, because you may remember as Geralt that you can actually tell some of Horson Jr.'s men, just on the outskirts of Novigrad, that that area is now under protection of the King of Beggars and no longer under protection of Horson Jr. And then they left. So yeah, they're pretty much everywhere throughout the city, but the main areas they control are a casino, an arena, and obviously Cyprian's own house, which is a townhouse in Upper Novigrad. So their banner was a black spades playing card, you can see from the picture I'm showing on screen, this is what they all wore to signify what gang they're part of, and also a lot of them wore this kind of face painty stuff to, I'd say almost look like clowns or mimes, it's an interesting choice, but I guess it's to single them out from the other gangs. So their notable members include Cyprian Wiley or Horson Jr as you may know him, and Igor the Hook. 
So next, let's discuss Cleaver's gang. So this gang was led by the dwarf, Carlo Varessa, which I think I'm saying correctly, but most of you will just know him as Cleaver, who was of course a dwarf. So this gang's headquarters is located near Hierarch Square, which is quite interesting because despite where their headquarters is actually located, the gang controlled the harbourside and the outskirts of Novigrad, and this was mainly because there were large amounts of non-humans there that were cut off because this gang is actually made up almost entirely of dwarves, so they want to protect non-humans. They're almost like the Scoia'tael, but they're a little less murderous, I'd say. They're willing to make deals. But yeah, so their banner appears to be a red axe on a black field. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this is an axe, but it does seem to look like an axe just from what I've looked at. It's a very simple drawing of one, but as we know, axes and dwarves go hand in hand. So this gang's notable members include Carlo Varessa, also known as Cleaver, and Caesar Bilzen. So I've discussed three gangs, but there's also one final gang, and this other gang is in Novigrad of course, but surprisingly we don't actually know that much about it. And the reason I say that it's quite surprising is because its leader is one of the more fleshed out characters in The Witcher 3, and that leader is of course Siggy Reuven, or as we the player know him, Dijkstra. And I can't say much about this gang because we don't really meet this gang in any way, we don't really see them, we see all the other gangs, but Siggy Reuven's gang is, I suppose you could say, almost on our side the entire time, so we never have any reason to interact with them. But all I can say about this gang is that its headquarters appears to be Dijkstra's bathhouse, and it's possible it may be somewhere else we don't go, but just considering that that's where Dijkstra spends all his time, I imagine that he probably has his gang centred there too. And his gang won't be as rough as the other ones, I imagine he'll keep them in kind of a high position, almost work them like spies, because as we know, Dijkstra used to be the master of Redanian intelligence, so I imagine he runs his gang in a very similar way, which is probably why we don't see them. You see, I personally think he may run his gang, if you've ever seen Game of Thrones and you know Varys, he had his little birds and they would find information out about people, go back and tell Varys, and Varys would use that to blackmail people and get what he wanted. I feel like Dijkstra would work in a very similar way, I'm not saying that he'd use children, I'm just saying that he would probably have a lot of spies that tell him a lot of information about people that he can use against them and use that to get power and I do imagine that he will kill people with his gang as well. And if you want to know more about how this gang was founded and Dijkstra as a character's backstory, I'd recommend watching my character video on Dijkstra as I discuss it in much more detail there. And actually, I just want to quickly say I will cover the other members of the Big Four, which are the leaders of each of these gangs, in their own personal videos. These are just an overview of their gangs as a whole. So now I've finished discussing the gangs, I want to discuss the way in which these gangs cooperate with each other in The Witcher 3 to achieve their goals. So as I discussed earlier, there are the Big Big Four, which is the King of Beggars, Horson Jr., Cleaver, and Siggy Reuven, or as we know him, Dijkstra. So they seem to negotiate with each other, at least that's the impression I got from playing the games about the way in which they're going to run the city, who has which territories, who controls what, and if somebody wants a territory or they want to control a certain thing within somebody else's territory, they'll have a meeting with whichever big four controls that bit of territory, and then they might possibly trade. They also have meetings for other reasons, for example we see them all having that bathhouse meeting when we first meet Dijkstra, and I believe that we do see that Cleaver does want to kill Horson Jr. a lot and they're discussing whether or not to. So you see there are a lot of under the table deals that these leaders make together to try and make it so that they can peacefully coexist. I mean, I imagine it will go much deeper than that. I seem to remember that they basically said that if Radovid tried to come into Novigrad, they would burn the ships. So in a way, they're protecting the free city of Novigrad, but only because it's for personal gains. But anyway, guys, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. This video has been really, really cool to make. It's really interesting to talk about these little bits of lore in The Witcher. I love the fact that there's so much to this game. There's layers upon layers upon layers that just makes this game so amazing. I mean, I haven't had a gaming experience like The Witcher 3 ever, and I don't know if I ever will until another game is made that's of just as good quality. But anyway guys, I really really hope you've enjoyed today's video. And if you actually like the video, be sure to click the like button as it does help the channel out and it's really, really kind of you guys and these videos take me a lot of time to make and just by clicking the like button, it shows that you support me. And be sure to comment anything you want to say, any suggestions, maybe get your name at the start of a video if I pick the suggestion. So yeah, be sure to just leave a comment in some way because it's really cool and I like replying to you guys. But anyway guys, be sure to go and follow me on Twitter. I do updates on there whenever I post anything so it's really useful for you guys to follow me on there if you want to hear anything about the channel, anything I might be doing. It's just good to follow me on there and then get that. I don't tweet too often so I won't be spamming your feet. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitch. I don't stream too often. I want to try and do it more, but if you follow me on there, you will get the notification when I go live. You'll be able to chat to me. We'll be able to have some fun, and you guys should just go and do that. So thank you all so much for doing that. Also, of course, be sure to subscribe if this is the first video you're finding on my channel. It's really awesome when you guys do that, because then whenever I post a new Witcher lore video, a gameplay, anything else you might be interested in, you'll get that video in your subscription box, and you'll be able to watch it. So yeah, be sure to do that. And also, of course, a big thank you to the Patreon pledges. You guys are 
are just the best. It's very, very kind what you do. You help make these videos. You guys are basically producers at this point, and I'm just happy to put every single one of you at the end of these videos. However, if I do end up getting more and more Patreons, I may have to change it that you have to pay, say, $2 to get your name at the end, because it's just going to get crazy. I'm already on five pages. <laughs> but yeah, thank you all so much, and I appreciate every single one of you, even a dollar, and you guys are just amazing. So thank you all so much. I hope you've all enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have an awesome rest of the week.